the nerdy for nerds by nerds i'm nerd steve today i'm joined by all these fine nerds uh unfortunately we couldn't make it last week but we're back this week and we are going to play some fifth edition dungeons and dragons we're going to be dungeon delving some dungeons probably not tonight but it does happen from time to time on the dungeons and delving show uh which we're in the hidden season of or something like that uh ted is going to be our illustrious gm of course we have our special guest carlo rivera Robin Miller and Bobby Partridge all in the house. Links to them in the description. We also have some links to some other things in the description, like this Kickstarter we keep threatening to relaunch. Uh, D and D in a <laughs> castle. Uh, Ted's going to be running some games, and also they've recently introduced their new hardcore mode, where you know you can play thirty six hours of Dungeons and Dragons. Damn, you know, twenty four is not enough for you. Uh, and you know you get to hang out with Ted in a castle. With that, I'm going to throw it to you, GM. Hello, and welcome to Dungeons and Delving. I'm trying to uh, do do things, uh, you know, multiple things at the same time. Uh, Dungeons and Delving is a campaign set in the far flung future where technology and magic have been kind of merged together and allow these illustrious heroes to participate on a game show. Last season, these adventurers competed against their rivals, winning their way to the top. And sadly, before they could truly claim their prizes, were thrust into darkness and trapped into this uh, dimension here, uh, or so they believe. And now they are struggling with trying to figure out what is going on, where they are, and how they are going to get out. Uh, so I'm going to find out what happened to my dice. They are way too far away, so I'm going to have to grab something else real quick uh, and roll my D4 to see who. Uh, and that is going to be Dave. Back to you. What you remember from last session and uh, introduce who you are and who, who you're playing. All right. Uh, Nerdix Dave here. I'm playing uh, Enzo Balazinar. He is a human variant battle master rogue. Uh, but more importantly, he's a master chef. He got involved in this whole Dungeons and Delving thing because he thought he's entering a cooking competition. There was a slight mix up in the paperwork. And here we are. Um, last session, I remember that, you know, we kind of split the party a lot. I went off the mope because, you know, I had some doubts about my cooking. And, you know, we had some residual bad juju going on from um, dealing with uh, whatever the creature is that's been messing with our minds and uh running a dark web dungeon and delving show of their own which they keep sucking us into which has been a total a total mind frig for us uh with that i'm going to throw it to arnold who was the one to talk me out of my despair what is good internet before i get into the details 36 hours of D D non-stop what is that what i heard <laughs> That's what you heard. Not, well, not, not nonstop. nonstop. <laughs> okay. It's, it's over three days. It's over three days. You get, okay. You get, essentially, you get like 12 hours of, of gaming for three days straight. Hot damn. Guys, get on that. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to collect myself. I am playing. My name is Carl Rivera. I'm playing. Well, I am. I run out ah, of words. Words are words. Words have meaning. That's what makes them hard. 
What's up, Internet? My name is Carl Zavera. I run the Volcanic Knight YouTube channel, and tonight I am playing Arnold Short, man, your artificer gift slash fighter. Um, in the last episode, Arnold didn't have too much to do in regards of like uh getting prepared for things. He tried to brew some things and it go too hot. No worries, no worries. But um, in the midst of it all, he noticed when um, he met up with, I'm sorry, Bert, right? Is that correct, Bobby? Burke. Burke, excuse Burke. me. Um, when he met up with Burke, he's like, hey, we should find Enzo. Oh, shit, what's happening here, man? He's like, he saw him in a slump and said, yo, you, you dude, holy the fuck together! And literally said, like, look, man, you're doing a great job here. You're a great chef, Enzo. We need you down here. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Robin because it's funny. All right. So, uh, hi, I'm Robin. I write weird fiction. You can probably find it in the description. Cool. Um, yeah, I play Nebula, and I have no idea what happened the last time we played because there was a tornado warning, and I had to go in the middle of the game. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Bobby because I'm pretty sure that he's the only one that hasn't gone yet. Yes! Hello, I'm Bobby Partridge. I am playing Burke and Hefty. Burke is a Dwarf, which is a Nerdarchy exclusive race, and he uh, Hefty is a Ganshuan, which is a uh, Nerdarchy beast you can find in the Fantastical Mounts, and uh, Ted was very nice in letting me kind of like play something that was a little out of pocket. <laughs> And uh, I remember last time we uh, encountered one of our uh, former competitors who we were against in the game, uh, an Asimar um, named, oh, I, I want to say Zariel, and I know that's wrong. <laughs> oh, it's Raziel. 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 There was like all the letters there, but they were in a different order. <laughs> so, um, devil. Yeah, you know, it might be Asimar. like the, the, the Queen of Avernus or just a random Osmar, one of those. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, and so we met Raziel and uh, Raziel kind of like uh, sequestered with Nebula and they were doing tech things together. That was what we established last time because we lost our beloved Robin. And so- um, Hey, hey, we, we didn't lose our beloved Robin. They just dropped off the, the stream. Yes, we we found them. By the way, we found them. So they came back, um, like a cat that you let out of the house. Um, and uh, anyway, um, Burke was getting ready for this talent show because, like, he is fully invested. Like, he is ready for this. He went and invited his treant friend. Uh, his name is Thorn Ironbark, and he was making his way very slowly and lumberingly, no pun intended, into the village. And that's what I remember. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start off uh, with uh, with Burke. You know, and we're going to have you just do like a couple of roles as you go about town, trying to encourage people to take part in, uh, you know, in this talent show. So mm -hmm. what what is your what is your mantra? What is your what is your sales pitch, if you will? Do you have talent? Everyone else needs to know about it. We are having a talent show where you can show your talent to everyone in the village and some people outside of the village because we have a special guest star. And uh, we are going to have a whole mess of fun. There's going to be actual electric lights because Nebula is doing things with Raziel. It's going to be great. You should join. <laughs> All right. So... What what do you feel uh, Burke would be, you know, using as incentive? Are you offering up any kind of prize or is this a camaraderie thing? The prize that you win is the satisfaction of being able to brag at everyone else in the village that you are more talented than the rest of them. And what what skill are you trying to use here to convince people? Because I know you're not super heavy on charisma. 
I am not super heavy on charisma, which is why I played it out the way I did. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I have a uh, persuasion bonus of zero. So this is just going to be up to the dice here. <laughs> oh, so well, I'm saying, is there another skill that you would like to roll that you feel would be apropos here? There are other skills I'd like to roll. I don't think I could argue them being apropos because my best one is animal handling. And I don't think that, you know, I get hefty really into this. Like he's ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, so so you're going to use hefty as your kind of uh, motivator? Yes. Oh. I train hefty to do a trick and be like, look how talented he is. And he only learned this in a day. And it's right. like standing give me, on give me or an, something. Give me an animal handling check. Okay, let's see. Animal handling. Does the indie beyond like me? It rolled a nine plus 13. 22. A plus 13. Holy yeah, crap. I got that right. uh, cautious feature. All right. So then so then I'll allow you to make your charisma persuasion roll at advantage because you did so well with your trick. All right, let's see. Maybe I, I was kind of hoping you would use animal handling to try and convince them, like you got treats. Uh, you know, maybe you know, roll <laughs> oh, that's paper. A... But <laughs> well, he's he's you have the treats. He doesn't know what the treats are going to be yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you got? I rolled a nineteen. All right. All right. So you've got you've got a a handful of people that are you know you know set and ready to go um you know beyond uh whichever of your adventuring companions are interested in in doing as well so while you're off talking to them let's roll back the clock a little bit and uh talk to nebula um i imagine on the the trail ride back into cast off uh you are you know, lost in rapid conversation with with Raziel. Um, so, uh, what what do you ask? What do you say? I don't know how much you remember about, you know, uh, what was what was going on before you dropped off stream. Um. Okay. It was like right at the beginning, so I don't have hardly anything about what happened. Right. So basically, he dropped in. You know, looked around, saw a lot of you but focused on you and said, you know, you are alive and like another sentence or two later and you were, all right, I'm out. I got to go. I got to go be safe. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm no, not. no, no. I shouldn't <laughs> apologize for that. I don't know why I just did that. I'm going to stop now. Um. So, you know, Ra Raziel kind of like lets you know that, you know, he's been you know, trying to find you guys because it's, you know, highly believed that what is happening on the networks isn't legitimately you guys, and that uh, some time has passed. And in fact, for you guys, it's only been a handful of weeks, where there it's been like seven months. Okay. Can I, can I get an idea of what has happened over the course of those seven months? Because that's kind of important. So like typically, is pacing. sure. So so typically, uh, when somebody wins the Dungeons and Delving, they get contracts. The whole fame thing leads to more jobs and with it more publicity. Uh, there have been rumors that a lot of you have contracts and everything's in the works, um, but nobody has actually seen you. Uh, there have been a couple commercial gigs with each of you, but um, you know, nobody's like I said, no nobody can get to you. Uh, Serafina actually went looking for your your public publicist, the the halfling woman. Uh, I I forget what her name is off the top of my head, but uh, after about a week or two, she disappeared. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's not just get out because we don't want to be in this hellscape anymore. It's get out because somebody deserves some payback. So after 
after some more time has gone by, uh, you know, there have been, you know, more research, more things going on. Uh, Serafina has kind of been like a woman on fire trying to, you know, locate Team Chimera. Um, you know, there's been, you know, protests and vigils outside the, the studio. Um, it's been, it's been kind of crazy. And then it led to some darker paths and, you know, that led to the, the concept of some kind of conspiracy and, you know, he kind of gestures around, you know, at the space. It's like, turns out that it's accurate. And I kind of went in as a mole to try and root things out of, of the unicorns. I'm the most willing and one of the most hardy. And well, that's good. certainly the one. Need it. And I'm certainly the one willing to make the sacrifice. So it's okay. really only been a handful of weeks for you guys. Yeah. So time flows differently in here, and that's something that we're going to need to factor in. It would be foolish to set it aside completely. That's okay. We can work with that. It just means I'm going to have to forward my timetable a little bit. A lot. A lot. I'm going to have to forward my timetable a lot. Um, It'll be okay. Let me so, get an idea of a conversion of like how long we've been here versus like how long it's been outside and I'll just adjust. So I know, you know, Serafina says that you're really techie. Yeah. Um, but obviously, like, you know, you're not doing anything in here that's been able to, you know, get any legitimate message out. Um, you know, suspects are believing that you're, uh, I don't know how active you were before on on Hark, but Serafina believes that there's some kind of bot handling your 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 channel, your stream. Just so okay. that that avenue is not really stopping. I mean, I would hate to come back to a channel that hadn't had anything posted to it in months. That would be a nightmare, but it's a little annoying. So what have you tried to do to to get a signal out? I haven't actually tried to get a signal out yet. I've still been figuring out like what all of this is and how to interface with it. Um, of course, I'm working on a hypothesis. I think it's going to take as much magic as it's going to take tech. No, I, I, I only have rudimentary knowledge. I will help in whatever situation you deem necessary. Um, but I'm 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 here to basically assist. However, all right, stand with us. We'll get you out. And uh, you know, with with that, you guys wind up you know making it back into cast off. And what plans does does Nebula have? Is you know all of this begins to unfold. Um. A plan to go out at some point when things are kind of quiet and low key and get a look at some of the magic keeping this place together. Okay. Like, I've got a pretty good idea what's going on on the tech side, at least better than I did. I need to catch up over there too so that I can fabricate an idea to try to project word outside. All right. Um, so give me an, uh, an arcana check. Cool. 18. 18. So, you know, as you realize, like this, this place you know, is a, is a mixture of arcana and, and tech. And it is so woven together that it's almost impossible to differentiate 
you know, one from the other, you know, from your combined experience living here for several weeks, you know, you understand that the things created here are as real as can possibly be, you know, meat is, you know, able to be cut and cooked off of the creatures that you guys have, have slain. Uh, you know, you've even, you know, seen people tending soil and, you know, planting herbs to grow and, and get sustenance, you know, from, from that direction. Um, you know, you know that the magic that was uh, used, you know, in the actual TV show wasn't quite as potent. You know, there were things that you guys would slay and sure, like it could react as if it is dead but you knew that once the program was over it was just going to like dematerialize and you couldn't actually garner substance from it uh so you know that this is a whole another of you know another layer something more extreme more extravagant than the magic that you've dealt with and the tech that you've dealt with to to make it you know that much deeper okay I like a challenge. So, you know, at this point in time, like Raziel is like pretty much staying by your side, unless you specifically tell him, you know, off with you. Um, oh, I'm not going to do that. I will like converse with him and things and keep him appraised of what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Because like in Nebula's mind, you know, Serafina sent him here. Mm-hmm. Make an insight check for me. Yes. Ten. I'm Ten. not okay. very good at it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no worries. Um so you know, he you know, he he continues to converse and you know tells you about the varying things that 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 kind of happened. Um, you know, gets in depth in the like the immediacy the the post show and you know you share your your vantage point of you know going into the prize booth and then all of a sudden this you know black screen of death if you will uh and you know from the viewer vantage point uh what was broadcast out to the world was you know the lot of you coming out you know, emerging with your, you know, successful rewards and, you know, heaps of gold and, you know, extravagant weapons and contracts and all of these other things that, you know, are fairly standard happens, fairly standard fare within the, within the TV show. Um, now, well, there are supposedly record deals for, uh, you know, you to be writing a new song, but no. All that happens on on Hark is your teasing and what what have you, uh, but you know no lyrics, you know no even uh, mention as to whether it's within the same vein or a different direction. It's it, it's it's rather peculiar and not quite fitting what you know our research says. What you would have done had you actually been there. Uh, we we've it's been an extensive amount of work on the on the lot of you i'm not trying to say it's all been been you but since you're here and you're uh, let's face it far more public than than the lot um actually where is tabitha i didn't see her she's here somewhere we're gonna have to get her out before we can get the rest of us out she's somewhere deeper and uh you know this this city here things are oh, city i use loosely this this town things are safe here safer than they are outside it so you guys spend a couple of days you know conversing him trying to uh you know assist with whatever whatever work you are trying to do uh, are you going to focus more on, you know, lighting? Are you going to focus more on, you know, some other kind of project? 
what is what is Nebula's occurrence here? I think the lights are important for any kind of performance. I want to make sure those are right. All right. Give me uh give me one final uh, tech check to uh see uh see what this looks like. Oh, 28. May I may I have like a suggestion here? Oh, take take um, to, uh complete complete agency. Given that is an absurdly high result. Um I would like to make the lights my performance for this show. I would just be accompaniment to whoever is going on and like just give them the right tint and amount of light <laughs> for whatever they are doing. Absolutely. Uh, so so what does it take for you to get an 18? I'm confused. Sorry, sorry. What does it take for you to get a 28? Okay, I, I rolled a 19. <laughs> okay. All right, so you have a nine, a plus nine in tech. All right. Yes, I do. So you managed to, you know, put this on and, um, you know, Burke lets you know about the whole talent show. So you kind of subtly like, look, you want to talk to everybody before they go on stage, like, you know, day of kind of deal and get a vibe of what's going on, get, you know, what, what they're planning and clue everybody into you know the expectations right yes all right so it becomes day of and beyond the lot of you willing to perform uh let's see here uh burke you have one two three uh three people from uh from town that wish to perform and of course, uh, Thorn has arrived and asks if if he could close the show. Absolutely, we would be honored for you to close the show. All right. Uh, so you've got three townsfolk, and it looks like the three of you uh, is a uh, is Arnold performing. The, indeed, absolutely. He has to show these young whippersnappers what's up. <laughs> All right. So, as a uh, as the creator of such a thing, Burke, uh, you can choose the order. Um, uh, let's see. We're going to have what is their name here? Um, you know, Kara uh, is the one who's going to kind of be the MC. As you kind of, you know, worked with her to get this thing going off, uh, you know, she's very much intrigued at what what's going on. But like, even though it was your idea, um, you know, she's been trying to help out as much as possible. Awesome. Um. So. Uh, the order will basically be whoever wants to go first. Like, Burke's going to ask where people want to be slotted and then just kind of try to slot them in the most copacetic way. Sure. So when you eventually right. so ask with that... Arnold this question, he's going to say, well, I'm big as I am. I don't know. Fit me where you see fit. <laughs> All right. So uh, Burke, Arnold, and uh, Enzo, do any of you want to go first? He's going to acquiesce to Burke's uh guidance because he Arnold knows okay I gotta perform but he's kind of confused about the whole fitting into a place again he's a big gift so he's like oh fit me <laughs> where you see fit I don't know <laughs> oh so I think Burke wants to go last because in his mind like he's put tons of effort into this thing that's out of character probably not going to be very good but he really is convinced it's gonna be great because he's a nerd. Because he's a nerd. <laughs> he is. He he has something planned that will appeal to everyone who is a fan of the same things as him. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you haven't had much uh, as a group. Having a, you know, haven't had much conversation with uh, Darius. Um, but Darius is a human who, I you know, 
when when the weather starts getting really bad, he is the one that kind of steps in and helps tame it. Um, but he's also, you know, been known, not that you've seen this, to have a little bit of, uh, you know, diviner powers. Uh, but he he decides that he he's going to offer up a song. Okay. So he steps up onto onto the stage uh, with a voice as haunting as the wind's whispered secrets. He begins to sing his melodic tones, weaving a spellbinding melody that dances upon the evening breeze. As he sings, the wind seems to answer his call, swirling and caressing his form as an unseen touch, harmonizing with his every note. His eyes, deep and enigmatic, hold a wisdom beyond his years, hinting at a connection to forces unseen. In his presence, one can't help but feel drawn to the enchanting symphony of his song, as if it were a vessel for the very soul of the wind itself. Ooh, very nice. So, you know, his uh, his his song done, he take, takes a bow, and, you know, so often with people with long hair, they bow and their hand, hair goes in their face. As he does, as he bows, the wind kind of like, comes up and pushes the wind out so that it, it doesn't do so. And then he uh, goes and takes his seat. Will, will there be an intermission in this thing? I imagine that is entirely, that is entirely up to you guys. Well, I'm asking Burke since he's kind of like the, the ringmaster here. Um, I imagine we would have three acts and then intermission. Okay, I want to go right before intermission. Okay. If that works into your uh, careful, carefully yeah. crafted plan. Yeah. So okay, well, um, I've got I've got two more townsfolk. Uh so one of them could go and then uh Enzo could go. Uh or you know, two two of you guys, you know, uh Arnold could go and then Enzo could go, however you see fit. Does Arnold have a preference? So Arnold's like, you fit me where you see fit. I'm as big as I am. I don't know where I can go. He, he's, um, and I'm I'm assuming at some point you're gonna explain to him like, oh no, no, it's not where you physically. Oh fit yeah, in. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He'll also explain hefty also fits because he's very large also. So it will be wherever you want to be fit. Uh, Arnold says, oh, 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 I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. It's been years since I've been on stage. Um, oh, uh, you've been on stage before? The galley again? You don't forget it. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> so he's like, look, um, I need a minute, one or two. So, Preferably not first. Okay. Definitely not last. Well, let's put you as the middle act of the second section. Oh. Huh. Oh yes, 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 yes. I see what you're going there. Okay, okay. Burke, Burke, this is why I love you, man. <sighs> and then uh, I right. guess we'll have so the then... Council goal. All right. So so with that order figured out, uh, Mirabelle the uh, fire mage and hearth keeper i believe you've interacted with her a little bit as well uh I know she's she's wearing a you know very uh flowing outfit that you know complements her red skin um but you know she she calls forth uh, a small fire to be you know set on stage and she stands you know behind it and then, you know, completely unaccompanied, uh, she begins to move. And amidst the flickering flames of the roaring bonfire, bonfire, the tiefling woman stands, her crimson skin aglow with the fiery hues of the inferno. With each graceful movement, she weaves intricate patterns in the air, her hands ablaze with the dancing flames that leap and twirl in time with her steps. As she whirls and spins, sparks of ember cascade around her, illuminating the night with a mesmerizing spectacle of light and heat. With each rhythmic sway of her hips, she commands the flames to rise higher, bending them to her will with effortless grace and mastery. 
Her fiery dance is a mesmerizing display of beauty and power, a testament to the fiery passion that burns within her. Wow, that's a very, very intense act. Ironically, Enzo will be following the fire act. <laughs> but the, uh, you know, the, 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 the fire is, is cleared off and, you know, made way for Enzo's, I imagine, you know, cooking station. That's it. He's going, he's doing, he's doing his dwarven elven hibachi fusion. Uh, and I've added some new things into my routine. I now make things disappear and reappear. Excellent. Also known as I now have sleight of hand. <laughs> uh, so I don't know yeah. if you were just going to eat it or not. <laughs> so, well, nah, he enjoys other people eating his 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 foods. That's true. That's true. So, uh, you know, he gets he gets it set up. He does, you know, his mushroom volcanoes and juggles his knives, uh, even throws some knives out towards the crowd and uses his apron to summon them back before they skewer anybody. Hopefully. Um, wrong kind of kebab. Uh, maybe he tells a couple bad jokes as he as he does. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have one of the little things to make it pee on people. But, you know, he makes he makes do. Come here, Arnold. Um. <laughs> Can I ask a question, Dave? Yes. Are his jokes cheesy or corny? Yes. They're like corn well, wrapped they're, in they're, cheese. They're oh. both they're both food related. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he does all the things. Uh and then when he's finished, uh he basically like has this whole spread set out that he then begins handing out. Not above nice. driving them. <laughs> But so they can right, so, have it uh, going into intermission. All right. So do you want to make a performance check or do you want to make a cooking check or do you want to do both? Uh, let's do both. All right. So I'll do my performance first. Oh, I'm using my new Lego dice. Got me. That's a 16 on performance. So I rolled terrible. And, uh, well, you have, you always start with inspiration if you want to use it for this. Oh, that's true. Okay. I will use it. So that's a 28. On, that's a 27 on my performance. All right. And hopefully we didn't screw up by using it. And only a 24 on my cooking. <laughs> only a 24 on how good the food is. <laughs> uh, so an amazing performance and, uh, you know, uh, amazing food. I dedicate my performance to Arnold Shortman and his words of inspiration. So while Arnold, you eat this uh, food, think of Arnold Shortman. Arnold will give a standing ovation, like yes. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to follow with that, but he's definitely standing up and clapping. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, so, yeah. So, so what is intermission, Mark? Um, so... Intermission is we're going to turn it over to Thorn Ironbark, who is going to close out the show for us. Well, no, there's still three more performances before Thorn goes. Yes, no, he's just introducing him and letting him say any words he wants to say. Oh, so he goes through, you know, a a slow spiel. You know, not all of you have had a chance to to meet me. It's been, you know, some time since I've, well spent time around you know this this little town you've got here but before i leave i'd love to have a word with all of you spends several minutes saying not a whole lot much but uh it gives you guys the the break that you need to get everything set up for the second act i did notice that he did leave out the fact that us all being here might be his mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say it's his fault. Well, without him, it might not have been possible. That that's true, but he did not make any actions that would have brought it about. He existed. He existed. Mm. <laughs> All right. So uh as we get into act two, 
the uh, the the little halfling that uh, may or may not have some kind of fey blood allowing her to run really really fast. Uh, you know, she gets up on stage, and with her tiny little form, she sits with her legs crossed and pulls out a uh, a simple little wooden flute. And she begins to play. With each gentle breath, she breathes life into the instrument, coaxing forth a haunting melody that hangs in the air like mist on a moonlight night. Her eyes shimmer with a hint of mischief. Twinkle as she plays, lost in the enchanting spell of her own creation. The melody she produces carries a melancholic undertone, evoking distant memories and forgotten dreams with its bittersweet resonance. Though the melody is but a whisper in the breeze, it lingers in the hearts of all who listen, leaving behind a sense of longing and wonder. Nice. Very nice. When, uh, I believe... before, before Arnold goes on, Burke is just going to say, all right, now break a leg. And I don't mean literally. I mean that metaphorically because we're in show business tonight. And don't break somebody else's leg. That's a liability. Well, I'll, try, I'll definitely try not to. Okay. All right, so uh, Arnold takes the stage. So as Arnold walks up, he says to the crowd, How many of you guys know what it takes to kill a wild beast? Gives a look out to the crowd to see what they know or don't know. I don't know. Well, at, at least half parents. of them, at least half of them are, you know, guards or hunters or what have you. And here, most have had to do some kind of killing. Uh, it's only a, you know, a small handful that are you know, not able to handle such things. It's a tough place. So with the people do raise their hands and how many of you know how to kill them with pizzazz? And showmanship. As a ha handful of people that are like, you know, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, Ted, this, at this point in time, I need to ask you, are you familiar with the video game Devil May Cry? I've heard the name, but I don't, uh, I don't know much beyond, beyond that. Okay, not, not a problem. I'm just going to start describing shit and you tell me what is necessary to make it done. I'm assuming actions sure. are thrown out the window, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. Okay. So, as he says, well, first of all, what if you need to have a kind of uh, beast comes up to your face? He immediately pulls out one of his muskets. You may want to give it a crack, crack, crack. And as soon as he gives a crack, 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 he's going to spin it up over his shoulder and pull it on over, let it drop, and then immediately pull out a thunder bluster, the one, you know, the item, and says, oh, yes, but what if something's even bigger? And as he lets off a few rounds into the air, you hear, like, a thunderous roar. <laughs> of bullets as they fray off. <laughs> but what if you need something that's more tamed and quiet he takes out the crossbow and <laughs> shoots a few candles off of the sky as some lights go dim like uh nebula hates me at this point <laughs> because she's like dog i just was working on this shit what the fuck god damn i'm gonna put it back up <laughs> um it's like oh yes well but what if you find yourself without a weapon at hand? And uh, but what if? And then, do you recall from the last session? I said, "Hey, I gave Azrael a dagger, mm -hmm. but it's a returning weapon." Mm -hmm. So, almost like pulling air out of his ass. Like <laughs> he takes the dagger from Azrael, like, and then. Starts it at um 
one of I, I'm gonna assume there might be a statue in the vicinity of this town hall area. Okay. Uh, where it hits right on the forehead. You tell me what dumbass roll I need to make for this. Right. I don't know. The well, for the for the the crossbow and the and the and the dagger, I'm gonna need attack rolls, and. Oh. Now, then, then we'll see what the overall performance looks like. Because there's always the, well, this is what I have planned versus how it actually is executed. Okay, so no shit on the dagger, net 20. It's Perfect. 31. I'll send you a fucking screenshot if you need <laughs> the <laughs> facts. That's fine. Uh, okay, cool. Love you, man. Rolling the crossbow. Okay, I, I you remember I said I min max my character for attacking and shit. Uh huh. The total results thirty eighteen plus twelve. All right, awesome. <laughs> Love you, brother. Now, uh, now a performance check. A performance check where I have neg one. We start off with inspiration. Is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna burn it here. Excellent. Uh, shit. Performance neg one. Shit. Okay, seventeen. I don't know if that's gonna. All right. Go to result eighteen minus one. Yep. All right. So seventeen is certainly not bad. Certainly not as good as some of the others that have that have stepped up. But you definitely get applause. He's like, ah, oh, sorry, it's bad. I'm old, as he uh, <laughs> hobbles his way off uh, stage unceremoniously. Uh, so, as Arnold leaves the stage, uh, you know, Burke, the stage is yours. Okay, so Burke has already handed Nebula, like, pages of descriptions of how he wants the lights to look. And basically it evokes like 1990s Batman movies, like lots of neon colors, lots of stark, bright and dark, all that. And he has stayed up all night druid crafting out of bark and grass and all sorts of stuff. What is essentially like Master Chief from Halo armor that he has colored with like berries and stuff. And you and you just hear from off stage, he says, What's that in the depths below? It's the Dungeoneer from season three, episode 12. We have the final scene, the thing that lurks in the deeps. And then the lights come on and there's Hefty and he has like grass braided into his hair and, and he's just kind of sitting there very like normal eating some sort of treat that is hopefully disguised as like, you know, with a face so it looks like he's chewing on a person. And, sure. and then uh, Burke like somersaults in and he's like, da 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 like doing his own theme music with his mouth as he's like somersaulting all over the stage back and forth. Unhand that helpless villager, evildoer. And Hefty's just kind of sitting there like he does and then Burke like runs up and starts like acting like he's fighting Hefty and Hefty just kind of sits there and then Burke whispers all right now and then Hefty rolls over like he's dead and he goes <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Burke stands there with the most heroic pose he can strike and says thus another victory for the Dungeoneer now to find my magic item and see <laughs> That was hilarious. Uh, so give me give me an animal handling check to see, you know, I mean, it's it's hefty. Uh, so the DC is pretty low. Um, 24. 24. All right. So make make your your uh, performance check with advantage here and we'll see yes. uh, see what this looks like for you. I rolled the same number twice two 18s nice good grouping so is this so is that a 17 it's an 18 i have a oh, okay zero. Oh, that's right zero not a negative one all right uh so 
you know, again, you know, you get, you know, clapping. Uh, you know, it apparently somebody in the in the crowd, you know, it was too dark to really see who it was, but somebody really liked it. Uh, you know, maybe there's another fellow Dungeoneer fan, you know, here in town. Uh, and then it takes a couple of minutes for Thorn to kind of, you know, make his way to the stage. And he realizes that's a stage you guys made. He gets on that thing. There's possibility that he's just going to bust it. So as he approaches the, the, the stage, he decides, you know what? I'm just going to perform from right here. You know, so he's standing next to the stairs. You know, he is quite a, a mighty tree and what have you. But he, he looks around at, at all of you. And you can see uh, the, the trunk that is you know, the, the, the meat of, of this, this creature, you know, kind of breathe in and breathe out. Uh, and then as the ancient trant raises its mighty limbs to the sky, a deep resonance emanates from within vibrating through the earth like a rumbling drumbeat. He begins to sing. With each powerful note, the trance voice reverberates through the forest, carrying a melody that stirs the very soul of nature itself. As if in response to the song, vibrant flowers burst into the bloom upon its branches, their petals unfurling in a kaleidoscope of colors that dance in the sunlight. With a mighty exhale, the trant releases the gust of wind, sending the blossoms swirling through the air like a cascade of fragrant confetti, covering all in attendance and a shower of his floral blessings. He finishes his song, kind of bows, and you know the the branches seem just slightly withered. But all of you, as these flower petals fall upon you. You all feel something. You all feel changed. So I'm going to throw this in the chat. And you guys can pick one of those boons and add that to your character sheet. And while you guys are taking a look at that, uh, how is it that you want to decide who the winner of said contest is? I, I just b before I get into it, but those booms are rocking, man. Yeah, <laughs> make, make it make it a hard to pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for for the audience, uh, you know there is uh, boon of the forest, gain proficiency with nature, proficiency in nature with expertise. Ancient Insight, advantage on perception checks. The Eternal Guardian, uh, can cast Barkskin once a day. Whisper of the Forest, gain the ability to speak with plants and animals. Or the Verdant Guardian, gain plus one hit point per hit die. Oh, I'm absolutely taking that. Um, uh, Whispers? The uh, Boon of the Forest, proficiency in nature with expertise. Oh, okay. I, I figured you'd want the uh the whispers. Um, I can already do that as a ranger beastmaster, actually. Okay. So I just can do that already. I think I'm gonna get chunkier and pick bark skin once per day, man. Yeah, eternal guardian, yeah. You you want oh you want bark skin? Yeah, sure. I, I think I just is that is that better than your armor? Well, I mean, it'll help my base, right? No, nah, if, if you're already wearing armor, it's not worth it. Oh, I think they fit back then. Because <laughs> it just gives you a static armor class. But like, yeah, it gives you like... an AC of 16. Yeah. Oh, no, my armor is pretty good. Um, All right, I'm just going to go with Viridian Garden then. Uh, one HP per. One, plus one per hit die. Yeah, that's where I'm going as well. I think that. What about Nebula? 
I really want to do. Like, is in which one am I taking? Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm liking Whispers of the Forest. If we're allowed to, like. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, that's the one I want. I I would like to have some conversations with some squirrels. Yeah. That sounds like fun. <laughs> You're gonna build a new fan base. Yes, I the, am. Out of nature. <laughs> sure. <laughs> They're going to learn how to sing Lick My Boots. No, I'm going to find out how to build technology in such a way that it is not combative with the nature around it and, in fact, works mm. with the ecosystem. Mm. Solar punky. Yeah, that you know what? Rocket. The fans will love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, th I feel like it's only fair that Thorn should pick the winner. You want Thorne to pick the winner. Yeah. He's the honored uh, guest. He should pick the winner. All right. Well. Or maybe like him and me. Nebula and one of the and Raziel can be the I like the one. fire one. You like the fire one? I like the fire one. All right. So let me go back to my document here. The uh the order was uh Darius the 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 singer with the wind then Mirabelle the tiefling who danced with fire that one yes uh then there was uh Enzo cooking then Alaria played uh the halfling on the flute then it was Arnold uh shooting and then it was oh sorry shooting with pizzazz <laughs> that pizzazz is and then uh <laughs> yes uh burke as the dungeon here and how many exclamation points is it like like at least three but no more than ten because that's all okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I I I gotta respect it because you know, like I I like the exclamation point thing myself. Um, with cameo by Hefty. <laughs> <laughs> with cameo, sure. Well, that was funny. All right. Uh, so Nebula votes for Mirabelle. Yes. <laughs> That's valid. She was pretty cool. All right. Who who are you voting for, Burke? Who am I voting for? Yep. I think I have to vote for Arnold just because I thought his opening was great. <laughs> like, how many of you have ever killed? It gives, like, serious, like, Crocodile Dundee vibes. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, Enzo, who are you voting for? Uh, the little halfling. So you vote for Lara. Well, how many extra letters can I put in there? Arnold, who are you voting for? All of them, uh, all the extra letters. I'm gonna vote Hefty because, like, um, he thought it was very wholesome. All right. Uh, so you're gonna vote for Burke slash Hefty. No, specifically Hefty. <laughs> Hefty deserves the vote. He, he well, carried that whole performance, man. You get to see him yeah. tumble and turn and uh, come on. Who is for? Bert was there commanding, but come on. <laughs> J JK and Hefty right. and Burke. Kara's going to vote for. Kara liked Darius. All right, so the, the votes are tabulated, and uh, the winner, based off of the four of you voting, Thorn voting, and Kara voting, uh, the winner is Ilara. Yeah. Oh. Woo! Yeah. Standing uh, ovation. So, uh, you know, she basically, well, literally runs up on stage and, you know, shakes, shakes uh, all of your guys' hands and shakes the competitor's hands and as is usual when when dealing with her like she has already moved be moved 
away from you before you even realize that she started to. Uh, you know, very, very rarely, if ever, do you see this one with uh, less than just a crazy amount of energy. Or I'm yeah. so happy for you. The you definitely deserved that win. That was amazing. You really rocked that flute. Drug test. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That was funny, Dave. Those fairy mushrooms from the Underdark, don't you know? So, what is it? What is it that you guys do with the rest of your evening after the uh, the talent show is over? I mean, Arnold. As soon as like, all right, we're closing up. Finally, he busts out his flask like. <laughs> Central City movie shine doesn't get much better than this. Burke, come on, take a swig. He's pushing the movie shine as many times as he can. Okay. Well, to to be fair, you know it's been a long time since you've been in Central City, so you wouldn't have any official Central City moonshine left. Absolutely um. not. I am hobbling. <laughs> with, I, it, I, I, brother, look, I ran out moonshine practically when I got off the planet. I'm, I'm just <laughs> hobbling the little things I could here and there to make sure, as sure. close as I can. Nothing is going to get as good as that peanut rum, man. There you go. <laughs> These alien peanuts just don't do it, man. I need some good old earth peanuts here and there just to make some good old peanut rum man. but I'll do the best I can god damn it <laughs> I tried it didn't go too hot uh, it, 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 the, the taste is so goddamn bitter man but you know what it still gives people some HP here and there Like, oh. it's almost like drinking medicine I, I... I, I, I think that's got to be a new thing. Uh, good, good, good berry moonshine. I think we need <laughs> to create that. You know what? Fine, let's do it. <laughs> Burke is going to go up to Nebula and be like, Nebula, mm -hmm. your lighting effects were so cool. That was great. It was like you've seen that show before. <laughs> Yeah, it was a blast, honestly. I really enjoyed like uh, just offering some accompaniment and really getting you guys to shine out there. You did really great, too. Thank you. The and he was really true to the source material. I really did. Thank you. Yes, and you, with the red lighting and hefty, he looked so menacing. He looked so menacing. I would have believed he would eat a real person. <laughs> Well, I know him, so I don't, I mean, you know him too, obviously, but, like, I don't think there's any situation in which Hefty could scare me. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. And did you see him roll over? He looks yeah. so dead. Oh, super dead. I'm glad he was faking. I was, too. Um, yeah. uh, eventually, um, Arnold's going to walk over to Nebula as well and say, Nebula. Huh? Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for allowing me to take part. No, no, you don't need me. It's been a while since I've had to not worry about what's over my shoulder. You know? And you, it, it almost feels like I'm young again. Thank you for bringing this to life if you will. It's part of being a team. You're going to make one hell of a producer one day and get the hell out of here. Huh. I hadn't really thought about it from that angle, but maybe. Well, you know what? Pulls out his flask. You take a few swigs of this. You'll think about anything any way you want to think about it. <laughs> I will take a drink. Take a shot? Yes! Yeah, I'm going to get everybody drunk! <laughs> It probably won't take more than one nebula is teeny tiny. 
Oh no, shit. I don't want you to get irresponsibly drunk. Just oh, responsibly no, like, drunk. Nebula irresponsibly drunk will not get into any trouble that you would think was a problem. She might prank somebody. That's about the extent of it. If you don't mind me taking a teeny bit of agent. So as you're like, you know how when someone's like chugging on it and you see the shit dribbling over? Yeah. That's when. Arnold's like, all right, and that's enough. <laughs> I give you finger guns. Gotta save some for later. <laughs> Gives you a hug. Have a great rest of your night. <laughs> you too. <laughs> so as as Arnold, you know, steps away, you know, your your shadow for the last few days, you know, Raziel asks, "You are a performer. Why did you not?" Go on stage. I was still performing. Did you see? Is... I did, and well, it was done quite well. You you completely captured what it what each of these performers set to do. It is not the same as being the center of attention. No. No, it's really not. Because if you're the one that's out there performing, if you are the one that is on the stage and they're looking at you, then it's really hard to take what they have to say about the work and not make it feel really personal. But if you take a step back and you frame it and you're making the art, but you are not yourself the art, I don't know. There's, there's just something that I really like about that. is not what I expected. Uh, Me either. I mean, you, you you, obviously have control of you. I'm not trying to you know, change any of that. We did not talk a whole lot when well, technically when last we were we interacted, we were we were rivals and you seem to be more in your growing feud with Serafina. I, I don't... was doing anything and everything to chase down a little bit more of that spotlight because I thought that it had faded from me, but the truth is that the light that I want is that on the periphery. I like making things and I'm not making things if I am the thing being consumed. It's, it's just something that I had to figure out. So your analogy of Light was quite the mirror to this evening's endeavors. That's where my mind is, yeah. That is interesting. I I don't know this place. I've only been here a couple of days. And I've tried to uh to get some some rest before uh anything potentially dangerous should happen. I'm told there are unexpected things that, that happen and I should be ready. I mean, I had a blade here from your companion. I don't know where it went. But I had debated going up and performing similar to uh, your gift friend there. Just more of a dance of the blade, if you will, but I didn't feel it would be right being uh, the most newcomer here. I honestly have conversed with very few outside the a lot of you, and this place has me shaken. If we're still here for a second one, then you'll feel more comfortable, and if we're not, then we'll find you a better platform for it. What is the what is the plans now? Um, well, I don't have a problem with merriment and and revelry. It is you know, something that truly is needed for the spirit. And yeah, you know, my 
kin think the spirit is more important than the physical. Well, it cannot all it cannot all be merriment. Not all be revelry. No. No, there's still work to be done. And right now my focus has got to be on finding Tabitha. We can't just leave her here and the less time she spends in whatever contraption they've got her in, the better. So that's what I'm going to try to chase down. That's what I'm going to start triangulating. You are you are a caster, correct? Yeah. Do you do you have spells that allow for the finding of an individual? Um, Nebula would know this right away, but I don't. <laughs> It doesn't look like it, no. This is a shame. Yeah, that well, would have made this not easy. <laughs> well, we can't have things be easy. Not all the time, no. But we'll figure it out. It's just a matter of tra tracing the magic, tracing the currents. And Tabitha's got a bit of that in her as well, so if I can figure out how to oh, excuse me if I can figure out how to pinpoint that this will be a lot easier well sounds like you uh need some rest um, now I don't know what the plans are but should you need me for anything all you need to do is ask you know, that goes the other way too, right? Like, if there's anything you need at all, we've got you. You're part of the team now. I, well, truth be told, I still feel like an outsider in several different ways. Uh, but my, oh, my, my charge is my friend, Serafina, bid that I find a lot of you and do whatever I can to bring you all home. So until that charge is done, it is not about what I want. Can I ask? <laughs> all right, this is kind of silly, but can I ask what she said? In regards to what? I mean, I don't know. Like, was it just a straightforward request? She like linger on it at all. I never mind. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sleep. I have clearly had too much to drink. You well, get some rest. I, I, I'm. I will be open and honest. I don't know why she is so driven. Um, I mean, I know that during the competition, she uh, desired to prove her superiority she enjoyed the the constant repartee with you uh, she always seemed to smile whenever she went up to you <laughs> but, yeah I uh, kind of enjoyed that too but you know it has been a bit of a fervor you know, the the first week it was a bit of frustration that uh you guys won and then the next couple of weeks it was a almost panic stricken search is I guess the most accurate phase uh phrase. You know, she at first wasn't sleeping, trying to figure out, uh, and again, I can't tell you why, that um, you know, she couldn't get a hold of uh, your team. And at first I thought that there was, you know, some like anger and frustration that she had to get out. And uh, then she she brought the whole team in and said, look, we're going to make this our goal to unravel this mystery. And those of us who 
are contracted to her service you know we are we are set set to our mission and when there was suspect that the you know the station house that does the does the show would somehow be behind all of this i i literally scoffed at her and said you know look i will I will take that mission, expecting it to be nothing more than farce. And as I got deeper in and tried to unveil whatever nonsense was was there, I expected to be proven wrong. Uh, or ex I expected to be proven right. And that, you know, there was no complicity with the, the station house. And I uh, never got to the controllers themselves, but eventually I stoked the wrong fire and here I am. So I can categorically say that it is someone uh, within the station that is responsible for what is going on. I would say 80 plus percent that it is probably one of the controllers themselves, if not the group. But the controllers are held secret. You know, you're not, you don't get to know who they are because that would be all kinds of problematic. Yeah. So I wish yeah. I had more information. I wish I had some way to do better be better thing is if they're sending us signals if they're changing things here then that means there's going to be a current that means they've got a thread into this place we drag that thread we drag them out on the other end of it or we follow it back to them either way they'll get theirs i'm not going to be a, a whole lot of use once we actually get into the room though and that's where you're going to need to step up no, uh, I I believe someone said here that there is a a smithy. If there is a a light blade that could be called forth, that it was what I would prefer. Um, All right, but so uh, we'll see you to that first thing in the morning. Shit, my bad. Mm. I forgot that I I forgot I took his blade. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my bad. I mean, y'all y'all offered him a dagger, and he's a sword guy. It's a, you know, while while one works, you know, trust me, it, it is a different fighting style using a dagger than it is fighting with a a blade. I mean, at this point, Arnold is drunk, and he's like, hmm. "Oh shit, I did that, didn't I?" <laughs> uh, so, does anybody have anything else that they wish to do this evening? Burke wants to talk to Enzo. Okay. Before Burke talks to Enzo, Arnold's going around his rounds trying to get his friends drunk on the moonshine once more. And Enzo's the last stop. Hey. Well, did, did you already offer to Burke? I think, yeah. Um, and I started with Hefty, in fact, and then went over to Burke. <laughs> Uh, All right, Burke, give me Burke, give me a Constitution saving throw. I, I, assuming you want to drink it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Burke, are you drinking? I'm sure. I got a twelve. Oh, All shit. right. So you're start. You're starting to feel a little tipsy. You still have control of your faculties, but whatever whatever Burke is when he's you know when he's tipsy, that's where you're at. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna do so the three the three of you have collected together. Uh, Burke's looking to have a conversation. He's Arnold's staying, offering the flask to Enzo. Arnold's not staying too long. He knows how to read a room. Like, oh, okay, wait. <laughs> he, he's just kind of like, hey, Enzo, roll fast, and I'll be out. I take and a sip, and uh, you know, you should tell, you should show me what you're using, to, you know, as your stillery stillery here because I'll probably help you with that. You know, mainly cooking's my thing. 
but I I dabble in some micro brews and I fermented a fruit or two in my time. All right. So does it does uh Enzo drink? Yeah, he drinks. All right, give me con save. Nope, that's a fourteen. Fourteen. All right. So you're 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 feeling it, but you know, not enough to affect you yet. And so look, I appreciate your offer, and I'm gonna take you up on it, man. Anything to make the best brews this town that I can bring, man. Ugh, I think I'm gonna call it a night, but you yeah, uh, do you have your recipe written down anywhere? It's all up here. Uh, we'll get together. I bet you don't measure either, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to measure when you have your ancestors guiding you when to stop pouring? Didn't you say you used to be an animal? Lit All right, I'm gonna make a. Hold on, I got. I gotta make a check. I I need to make a check now, cause that's not like some shit. Uh, wait, what is so? What is the check to be offended? I don't know. Uh, I think you just decide. Uh, well, didn't you tell us you yeah, were literally an animal in a zoo? Yeah. So literally at this point, um, kind of tipsy, like, but like, ah, I'm li I'm a little bit past tipsy, but not fully drunk. Um, but like at this point in time, like, um, uh, Arnold's like, he kind of grips up Enzo, like, that's not cool. You're not supposed to say that word, man. Listen, I'm a gift, a gift, not an animal. Her, you see him storm off as well. Like, her, I turned to Burke, and he actually said he was an animal in a zoo at some point. Oh, he absolutely <laughs> did. I thought. I mean, not there's anything wrong with being an animal. I mean, the zoo part kind of is cringe. That sucks. But, you know. Yeah, he also alludes to being very old at times, which is very strange. But on top of all that, he just drinks a lot. Yes, much more than you would think any humanoid could possibly stand without getting severe kidney failure. Well, maybe there's some other kind of failures going on. That's possible. Or he might be a real animal. Maybe. Maybe instead of filtering through his kidneys, he filters through his brain. That would make sense. Oh. You know, I've been thinking, your performance today was very inspirational. It was very good. And I was thinking about how you do elven and dwarven fusion cuisine. You take the best elements of both and you mash them together. And, well, we have been on the show. We were very much like being individuals on the show as a team on the same side. But we haven't necessarily like fused like your cooking. Oh, you want to and be the team leader? I'm not sure we need a leader, but I think that we could use more teamwork. And But I feel like a leader lends to having more teamwork. I agree. I mean, Nebula is quite charismatic. She's the one that signed us all up and got Perfect. us. Perfect. I, I slap Burke on the back, and as we're talking, I start guiding him towards wherever Nebula is staying. But, you know, I think we should talk to her because... Something else occurred to me, given the copious amounts of alcohol that were offered to us. Arnold, for whatever reason, strikes me like he's maybe been a leader before. Because, think about it, he, tr he just brought all of us together with moonshine of some variety or another. God damn it, not again. <laughs> and I, I just feel like maybe, maybe... We've found the missing piece. Mark, are you suggesting that the key to leadership is a bad influence? 
I mean, I'm pretty sure Nebula said something along that line at one point. Okay, we not, I knock on Nebula's door. <laughs> You're still muted, Robin. So I open the door and I'm kind of like leaning in the doorway and just like giving you the you have woken me up expression. All right. Sorry to bother you, but we might have been drinking. And Burke Is someone a, dead? Not yet. Burke had a great idea that our team could use more teamwork and and a leader. And he thinks it should either be you or a drunken horse. Who's who's drunken horse? Is he a horse or is he a hippopotamus? I think he's a gift. But at one point he says crazy drunken horse. I'm he sorry, something it's about he said something about being a drunken horse. I don't really know what that means or a river I, I don't know if that's the type of booze that he drinks you know before he had to start making his own but uh burke was just saying how arnold is the glue that fuses us together and you know, i don't think a, you should be calling a horse glue but go on well he's not really the horse anyway he's a gift or jiff some yeah i heard it pronounced both ways i don't know which one's right um, but <laughs> so if we're going to do the teamwork thing and work together, we're going to need a leader. And Burke seems to think we need some form of bad influence to take charge of this. Am I some form of bad influence, Burke? Well, didn't you say something about every team needs a bad influence or something like that? I might have said that, yes. So if he's our bad influence and he's offering us all copious amounts of alcohol, meaning he's worse influence, and he gives off a lot of leaderly vibes, maybe this horse is the glue we need. This is Drunk Burke. <laughs> I think that a little bit of direction is not a bad idea. However, I also think that you should sleep on this and we should all discuss it in the morning when we're sober after we have had water and breakfast and no longer have headaches. Good? Yes. I just had an epiphany. Uh-huh. You you know how like close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades? Well, if Arnold is a horse, he has both. And he just like is looking at you like he absolutely came up with the most brilliant idea. Are you sure that you only had alcohol? You haven't been smoking anything, have you? I don't know, to be very honest. Uh, there may have been some sort of pollen in those plants I was druid crafting together and smashing up to color my dungeoneer outfit. Well, Nebula, we did have one plan. Uh-huh. Hear us out. We're going to take good berries and ferment them to make good berry moonshine. Do you think it'll keep you drunk longer? I don't know, but good berries taste pretty good. It's right in the name. It is right in the name. Berry moonshine has got to be a thing. You can ferment almost anything, but fruits work really good for that. And it nourishes you. It uh, you know, restores your and re restores health and invigorates you. And you'll be drunk. I think I think I want to serve this in my restaurant. Cool. Maybe we'll give it a better name than Moonshine, though. A little more class. Sounds good. What about Sunshine? Sunshine. We'll, we'll workshop that. Still drunk, Burke, by the way. <laughs> so, um, when are we going to head out for the mountain? I was thinking sooner rather than later. I am in the process of trying to figure out a way to go find Tabitha. 
I know you want to find Tabitha, but if we can unravel the mysteries of this place and and what foe Tabitha is doing, I think that could possibly lead us to real Tabitha. Because if real Tabitha is not here, how would foe Tabitha know about real Tabitha? Okay, great. Let's do that. Yeah. So we need to capture a foe Tabitha and the real. Cool. Cool. We'll figure out how to do that then. But for now, go to bed. Do you know what time it is? Time right. for us we're, to get a watch. We're, we're going to absolutely do that. And then as we walk, uh, good night, Nebula. As we walk away, all good right, night. let's make snacks. Okay. Going to make s'mores? We Oh, let's go old school. Let's make s'mores. Ooh, I like s'mores. Also, I might be able to help you out with your good berry idea. That sounds great. Let's go let's go outside the fence, get some firewood, and start a campfire and make s'mores. I like that idea. Outside of town? Yeah, we're not or are you? We're not irresponsible. We're not going to start fires all over town. Huh. Um. Can I cast Goodberry? Um. I will cast Goodberry, and Enzo notices that this time when I pull out that sprig that the berries sort of sprout on. When he casts it this time, you see a little butterfly like fly out from nowhere and rests on the branch just before the berries form, and then it flies away. And You're doing a lot more with butterflies lately. Yeah, it's it's just something that kind of happened, and. Now I have these. And he hands you the good berries. And they're like noticeably different. They're like, they look better and they're bigger and they're plumper and they're juicier. And now they restore four hit points each when I use a first level spell slot <laughs> because I have a level of cleric. <laughs> oh, life cleric. Nice. Yep. These are freaking, these are like ginormous. These berries are so freaking huge. I know, right? And plump, and they're kind of really juicy. Yeah, they might make better moonshine or sunshine or starshine or whatever is shiny. What about good berry brandy? Oh, that sounds very nice. Sounds like the sort of thing you would hear a country song about. You can find a wizard to precipitation it and make it ice cold. Oh my god. Hmm. I bet Nebula could do it. We should go wake her up again. And he starts like headed back. I will horse collar Burke. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't think I don't think that's a good idea. She didn't seem too happy the last time. This is me saying out of character, you guys are the worst drunks ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just say I love Enzo, you all but god Enzo's damn it not, Enzo's really not that drunk he's just feeling mischievous <laughs> and he likes to encourage Burke yeah Burke just has no inhibitions whatsoever and no impulse control either when drunk alright so you guys are looking to go uh um, you know, just get some uh, some firewood and start uh, start making some s'mores, huh? That's the plan. Hopefully, nothing terrible happens to us, and hopefully, fake Tabitha doesn't show up while we're out here all alone in the outside of the town, defenseless. I wouldn't say you're defenseless. So how long start. Do you stand by the. Uh... Grab Daddy. a stick so I can start drawing our our, our strategies and battle plans uh, as we start thinking of uh, how how our team can coordinate them. So 
how long do you remain by the fire cooking s'mores and strategizing and you know trying to work through the uh the drunkenness uh roll a d4 uh bobby okay four longer than we should have four hours <laughs> uh so a couple hours into it i, I imagine the fires burned a little low and you guys are kind of just sitting there having some some general conversation and uh a uh you know one of the one of the tree you know or one of the one of the tree stumps or what whatnot that you had kind of gathered kind of shifts a little bit and kind of grows in size as if it's you know ready ready for someone to sit upon and Tabitha the steps out of the shadows and takes a seat. She's sitting across the fire from, you know, the the two of you, or if you're kind of stretched out a little bit, uh, you know, she kind of sits so that the fire is in between the the lot of you. Oh, oh, Tabitha, how nice of you to join us. Why didn't you, why did you not come to the talent show? Townsfolk don't really seem to like me. Your your audio has been cutting in and out, Ted. I don't know if you need to get close. Whatever. Uh, sorry, sorry. Is this better? No. 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 Uh oh. Now it is. Oh, that is. All right. Uh, well, sorry about that. Uh, so the uh the townsfolk don't really seem to to like me, and well, to be fair, you keep calling me foe, Tabitha. I'm I'm Tabitha. Hmm, we don't really have any proof or evidence of that, other than you saying you're Tabitha. You don't act like Tabitha. Well, there is there is something to be said for that, but not everything you're doing here is always you. I have not seen you give out one sword pendant yet. That is true, but... Maybe you're not ready for more sword pendants. That's definitely not a thing to have to look. She'd love giving out her pen her sword pendants. She did. <laughs> so what what do we owe this visit for? Have you come for the s'mores? Well, it has been some time since I have sampled your cooking. You didn't seem Uh, how should I put it? It didn't seem like you were trying to drive anyone away, so I figured I would take it as an invite to approach. Well, we haven't been able to get rid of you. We've tried. We haven't been able to find you when we've tried. So, yeah, here we are. Can I cast a... So I... Go ahead. I just want to cast Detect Evil and Good. All right. Uh, and what does that spell specifically do off the top of, top of your, your head here? Um, It lets me uh, know if there's Aberration, Celestial, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, or Undead within 30 feet, as okay. well as where the creature is located. All right. That does not uh does not produce such a thing. Okay. Do I think it took hold and just there's nothing in the area, or do I think that it's like got canceled somehow? Oh no, your spell, you know, reaches out and confirms that there is not. Okay. That's good to know. Are you using a spell or are you using primeval awareness? Um, I'm using I think a spell. I don't know if primeval awareness does that. Um, let me see. Uh, no, I have primal awareness, which is a little different. It's um because I 
took like the alternate stuff from uh -huh. Tasha's. So like I have bee sense and talk with plants and all that stuff through that. So I offer her s'mores. Well, she begins uh, assembling, and you know, kind of has a a, a simple, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a simple conversation. Uh, so when um, you know, doesn't... when she goes in, like when I'm handing her the stuff for the s'mores, mm -hmm. I want to try and sleight of hand her. I want to try and pick her pockets. Okay. Really wish I would have still saved that inspiration. Um, can Burke inspire him? Uh, I think you would have needed to have inspired beforehand. Uh, oh, you, oh, you mean you want to use your inspiration? I want to use my inspiration to uh, help him, like Burke, yeah. kind of like slap yeah, you, you, back you, or something. Still, kind of. Have you, to... Yeah, you can turn turn your reroll in for <laughs> for him. Perfect. Yeah, do it went down. <laughs> so no! uh, a 13 or an 11. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So uh, you know, you you reach into into her pocket and uh you know, you you pull out. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back to my document a second here. Um yeah, that's Uh, so you you pull out uh, one of the uh, one of the golden orbs that uh, you saw Tabitha grab. Give me roll me a d four. D four, you say? Um, yep. Oh, so like um, like the prize rewards? Yes. Oh, well, that's not great. Three. There's a three. Okay. I'm going to crush it because that's how they get activated, right? Yep. So, like, you're right right there in front of her? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure she noticed me grabbing it, so, yeah. Uh, she she didn't. Um, you, you, you pull it out and crush it and, you know, uh, out pops a, uh, a contract. Ooh. And so I kind of, like, flourish it and say, oh, what is it you wanted, Tabitha? And I uh, read the top of it just to kind of get the gist. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't have what Tabitha was uh, specifically looking for. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, Any guesses, Burke? What do you think it was Tabitha wanted? Also, I think she really is Tabitha. She's got Tabitha's pride. So, you know, there, there's, there is, you know, something about, you know. Uh, a a contract of uh you know breaking contract um and Tabitha quickly you know snatches it out of your hand and you know begins rolling it backing up and sticks it into her black coat. So do we like know Tabitha was a warlock? I feel like Tabitha was pretty open with yes. stuff. Yes. Oh someone wants out of their contract. Or did you didn't crush the orb? You didn't claim the prize. Give me an insight check. Did someone have a change of heart? Tabitha? Oh, insight's not my thing. Man, these Lego dice suck. They look cool, but they suck. <laughs> That's oh, an A. Are they on DD Beyond? Yeah. Yeah, I like my Baldur's Gate ones. Yeah, I'm 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 going to have to fire the Lego dice, I think. Going to fire the Lego dice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very cool when you roll them. They do cool things, but I haven't rolled very well with them. Can uh Burke make an insight check? If Burke would like to make an insight check, he can. Um, yeah, I'll make an insight check for a 10. <laughs> oh, it's an improvement. It went up. 
can I make an insight check um, from my sleeping quarters? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you have a dream about town. Sure. <laughs> sure, you can go ahead and roll and see whether you know what you're thinking. <laughs> um, uh... Burke would like to, when Enzo says he thinks this is Tabitha, Burke looks at Enzo, he looks at Tabitha, um, and Nebula, you may have to give input here, because you're the one that kind of assembled our team. So, like, do you have envisioned where you met everybody already? Like, where you met us? Um, no, but... I can um, probably come up with one for Tabitha pretty fast. Okay, because like um Burke will uh can I take liberty with Burke's then? Please. Okay, so Burke will look at Tabitha and say, you know, Nebula is the one that assembled our team together. I ran into her because my family was providing the food when she was doing a music video out in the country. And I met her. And she met Baby Hefty when he was much smaller and I could still hold him. And she liked to pet him. Enzo, where did you meet Nebula? Oh, well, after um, Chef Bob tricked me into signing up for Dungeons and Delving, I was just like standing there and your group wandered over. And then I heard someone say, You were Go thrust this way. upon our team. You were thrust upon our team because we had only only called for three and the team required four. But you were one of those that got to, shall we say, fill in. That sounds accurate. So then here's my question. Where did you meet Nebula? All right, Robin, do you have the answer? Uh, yeah, like... I showed up while she was in the middle of sword practice and like watched for a little while. And as she was uh, finishing her uh, workout routine, pulled her off to the side and was like, hey, I have a job opportunity for you. So she tells you a very, very similar story. Um, oh. Oh. You know, of, you know, this this time where, you know, she was still learning how to properly use the blade and well to be fair the whole time you guys were on the show using the blade wasn't necessarily her specialty um but you knew that you know tabitha very much enjoyed the the sword work even though she wasn't completely good at it she um, wasn't good at it at all you know <laughs> um, she wasn't but, proficient but, <laughs> but she liked it uh she did like it and you know she tells tells this story in you know a uh, fairly accurate detail of you know being there and you know trying to manipulate this this very large weapon and wasn't doing all that great a job but nebula came over and said that she she liked the look and that if i had other talents that uh you know perhaps there would be a space to be on a team to have a job to well what was the tagline earn fame and glorious prizes and well the thought of getting some fame certainly appealed to me so how did you go from our tabitha to this tabitha I don't believe I can properly answer that question. I mean, were you ever really our friend? Yes. Why are you doing this to us? It's all part of the puzzle. Can I get a read on her when she is answering these, like, specific past two questions sure because like this is something burke's been like running through his mind for a long time now oh i got a 21 
So she has been fairly difficult to read. Now, you know that Tabitha is kind of dead. Um, so that in and of itself makes for a little bit of an anomaly. But if anything is to believe with, you know, with her power, is also, you know, pretty good at hiding a lot. And you know, there was, you know, a handful of secrets that were unveiled, you know, through some of your your conversations uh while you were on the show. Um, but you do feel like this is the first time that you're really connecting with somebody. And she's definitely hiding something. But with your 21, as painful to you as this is, you think this is truly Tabitha. You know, not only because like, you know, an orb was pulled out of out of her jacket, but you know, this interaction has been a little bit more open, a little bit more um You know, unguided. There's no, there's no challenge. There's no monster. There's not nothing going on. It's just talk, and perhaps this is allowing you to see that you know there's there's layers involved, and you you think she might be hurting through all of this. So it's hard to tell. Was it your plan all along to infiltrate the show? Is that what you were doing? Well, there... She pauses. And you can you can kind of gather by the way, you know, her eyes are, are moving. You can see the, the flames flicker. Let's say there are a lot of reasons for doing what I did but it all started with Nebula contacting me how long have we been talking I would say at least you know half hour Ooh. if you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat, you can learn information about its capabilities compared to your own. Strength score, dexterity score, constitution, armor class, current hit points, total class levels, if any, fighter class levels. If... Uh, total class levels? About the same. Yeah. Does she have any fighter levels? <laughs> she does not. Yeah. She's stronger than me. How strong are you? Uh 18. 18? She is not. Uh Dexterous? Dexter? Dex is dexterous. That's the word. Um 13. I believe you've got a 20. Was it? 13. Oh, you're you're not a dexterous dex uh, fighter. No, um, I'm not. All right, let's see here. Um, Enzo kind of is modeled after Chef Boyardee a little bit, so. <laughs> I don't know if I have this here. Um, I was not prepared for this question. I know. We've been talking for 30 minutes, too. <laughs> I'm asking all the questions. If I had a all dollar right, so... for every time that happened in my Saturday games, man. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right. So you said you have a dex of 13? Yeah. All right, her her dex is higher than yours. Uh, I have a sixteen constitution. Uh, I'm gonna say equal. Okay, can I discern her armor class? Uh, is it just in relation to yours, or is it tell nah, you? No, this it is? one it just says armor class. Uh, sixteen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It is in relation to mine. I, I've. My apologies. And uh, current hit points, I have 146. I would say lower. 
All right. We've discerned all the information about Tabitha I could possibly need. Tabitha? Nebula told yeah. me about a spell that can make you do things. I don't know if you can talk about it or not, but do you think that that is something that has affected you? He looks at you for a good solid 10 seconds across the fire. Well, gentlemen, it appears that our conversation has come to an end. Just thank you for the s'mores. It was delicious. And she stands up, brushes the, uh, you know, whatever stick debris or crumbs that might, uh, you know, uh, appear with on her, her jacket and legs. Bows across the, the flames. And as she stands up, her sword appears in her hand that twirls. And as the blade kind of cuts through the air in front of her, you, uh, you watch as just, you know, everything above the blade just seems to disappear. And for just a moment, you see like half of her as the blade kind of like is in the middle of the air, her arm still moving it. Uh, but her top half is completely gone. So in that split second, she disappears. She, without answering my question. Yeah, she's kind of a pain in the ass that way. I think that's really I don't know if she's choosing to do this, though. I don't know either. Enzo? Do you yeah. think... Do you think we can save Tabitha? I think we have to one way or another. Even can mean different things to different people. Let me tell you this story about a dog, and uh, and, I said, and with that, I'm gonna like we'll, we'll walk back into back into back to to village. Fade the black on that thought. Now uh, we'll pick up, uh, you know, there next time. Uh, as we can see where next these amazing adventures go next as we delve some more dungeons and you know maybe have a little bit heart little a little bit less heart to heart as we kind of saw tonight or delve, so, or delve any dungeons <laughs> <laughs> well i kind of knew tonight was going to be you know a little bit more role play heavy and and what have you to. there were no dungeons um, or dragons in this game <laughs> so uh you know make sure you head down to the description and check out all the links that you know dave was talking about uh whether you want to come you know join in a game of uh you know D D at a castle with myself or you know any of the other dms that are going to be out there uh as well as you know all, all the other cool things of what these people do when they're not here gaming with us so until next time stay nerdy, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.